the final tune-ups along the road to the 84 games. A coronation is something you might think happens only in a place like Monaco or London, not in the United States. But less than a year from now, a coronation of sorts will take place here in America at Poly Pavilion in Los Angeles. Continuing the lineage of names like Vyacheslavska, Ludmila Tresheva, Olga Corbett and Nadia Kamenich, we will crown a new queen of gymnastics. Today, women who'd like to wear that crown have come to Poly to test, to explore, to compete on the platform in the arena where the gymnastics competition for the 1984 games will be held. Welcome to the World Invitational Gymnastics Classic. Donna Deverona with Nancy Thies Marshall in Poly Pavilion for the women's all-around competition and everywhere we see showcased the Olympic theme, the colors, and the actual physical layout that will be used during the 1984 Olympics. And Donna, that's exactly why the athletes want to compete in this competition because it's an, a chance to be up on the podium where perhaps the timing is a little different, chance to feel the atmosphere in the gym, and that's an advantage next year when they come back for the Olympics. Well then, what should we look for from these athletes? Many of the girls may be performing some new stunts. They're trying them out a year before the competition. They're perhaps not perfected yet, but they will be dynamic. Nancy, it was just a little over a year ago that you and I traveled to China, and then the women we're going to see were kids. And you said, these are the people we got to look for. And those kids today are women. Diane Durham, Mary Lou Retton, all soon to be very familiar names. And some old timers, Julianne McNamara, Kathy Johnson. But it's hard to single out anybody from the U.S. team because we have six top-notch girls all going against the best in the world. The Romanians, the East Germans, the Czechoslovakians, the Hungarians. It's going to be a tough competition. And a reminder, this is an all-around competition, so there will be gymnasts on all four apparatus at once. Up for the first rotation in the vault is 15-year-old Mary Lou Retton. And Mary Lou is certainly becoming well-known on this event. Sukahara with a full twist and layout position. Couldn't have been done much better. Certainly is a powerful performer. And Donna, that power comes from two places. First of all, her legs as she runs, and then from her shoulders as she pushes off the horse. Watch how tight her body is. You can just see her squeezing all the way through. Her score, a 9.85, and in the all-around competition, it is important to have a good beginning, as well as a good coach. And everyone by now knows that her coach, Bella Caroli, was Nadia Kamenich's coach. Earlier, we asked Bella to tell us about Mary Lou. Her progress is continuous. It's very consistent and continuous. All the time she's learning new moves and new skills. And she's anxious to learn. She she, she's the type of gymnast who all the time we like, we can do this thing, this combination on. I think I could do it. Sometimes I have to hold back <laughs> to not grow over her potential and to keep her in the safety uh, limits of performances. Intense and delightful, Bella also coaches another dynamic 15-year-old, Diane Durham, who's about to begin her floor exercise routine. She was the one who had a great physical potential, performing pretty high combinations and gymnastic skills. But she was the one who never could finalize everything. Now, she became a very confident, very aggressive type of gymnast who is going 100%, you know, to win. She is the type of the winner. Diane Durham. Donna, part of Bella's philosophy that has enabled these girls to become winners is that when they walk into the gym, he wants them to think that it's just the athlete, the equipment, and the coach, and that's all they think about. First tumbling run, very good height. two things are going through Diane's mind right now. One of them is the actual mechanics of what she's doing during the routine. And the second thing, perhaps more important, is she's trying to imagine competing in the Olympics next year. One and a half twist into a double twist. Tumbling run. Good high, double. 
double back somersault. Nothing stopping Diane. A fabulous performance to an enthusiastic crowd. Diane seems to explode off the floor exercise mat as she goes for her tumbling run. Punch, lift, full twist, right into a double back somersault. A strong performance, her score 9.9. .9. So Mary Lou Retton and Diane Durham have the top two scores, but there's more to come in the first rotation. We'll be back. Pavilion, and the competition is still underway in the first rotation. Moments ago, this was the vault by Birgit Sen of the German Democratic Republic. She got good repulsion off the horse, handspring, half twist with a back somersault out, and nailed the landing. Her score, 9.80, and now she's third behind Mary Lou Retton and Diane Durham. Coming to the floor, perhaps the most accomplished American gymnast, Julianne McNamara, floor exercise. Julianne has added a lot of sensitivity to her dancing here, so let's watch and see how she does. Good high tumbling, but a little too far off the mat. She'll have a tense deduction there. Notice how comfortable she looks, smiling. Nancy, how many of them are trying out new routines for the Olympics? Well, most of them have some new things in their routines. They're not completely new, but new stunts. And of course, it's also just an opportunity to, as they perform, think about it being the Olympic Games. Triple twist, that's a new one for Julianne. Almost made it. Graceful performance. I enjoy watching Julianne. I think she's very comfortable up on the floor and uh, knows exactly what she's doing here on her tumbling run. Notice how she punches up, has to twist three times in the air. Doesn't quite make it all the way around, but is able to cover up and finish out. It cost her her score 9.75. Kathy Johnson, a member of the national team since 1976, a member of the 1980 Olympic team. She's 24 years old and considered an old lady in this sport. And you know, the longer she stays in the sport, the more respect she gains from her peers and the coaches. The technical experience she's gained over the years must really help her. It's tremendous. She's such a concentrator, and you can see that as she performs. She knows exactly where every part of her body is throughout the whole routine. Here's where that side walking comes in handy. Very comfortable with her focus off the beam. Back extension rolls. He made those famous. Right into a backhand screen. Nice side leap. Getting ready for her dismount. Tumbling into a round-off double full and a good landing. She's happy with that routine. I think except for a few little bobbles, those warm-up exercises paid off. Hoping to make the Olympic team, 1984. Her score, 9.6.
So after the first rotation, it's Durham, Retton, Sen, and McNamara in that order. We'll be back with more gymnastics later. Right now, let's join Don Crickey at the World Open Pocket Billiards Championships. 15-year-old Boriana Stoyanova. The Bulgarians have really improved in the last few years. Boriana is just one example of the gymnast that they have now. Doing very well. Nice high double back somersault. Boriana was third in the floor exercise at the 1983 European Championship, so she's on her way. And one of her strong points is her tumbling. Here we see her first tumbling run, which is a round-off back handspring right into a what we call a full-in. You see the full twist here into a double back out. Her score, a 9.7, which moves her from 10th to 8th place with two more events to go. And now 15-year-old Diane Durham in the vault. Another aggressive vaulter. Lay out Sukahara with a full twist. She is so powerful and eager. I think she's hungry to attack the horse. Gets tremendous push. Right into her twist. Again, nice tight body. And for Diane Durham, it's her second 9.9 .9 score. Can't get much better than that. Earlier, we let you in on what Coach Bella Caroli thinks of his two great gymnasts, Diane Durham and Mary Lou Retton. Here's what they think about him. He likes everything to be perfect. He wants perfection. He wants everything to be the way he wants it. And it's just he likes to push us hard, you know, and wants everything just the most we can give he wants. And I think that really helps us a lot. Bella is a different type of coach, you know, compared to my old coach. He pushes you and he gives you confidence, you know. He'll spot you on things and he'll tell you to go for it and you'll feel safe because you know if he tells you to go, you know, you're all right. And he always says, be careful, and it makes you just feel good, you know. It gives you confidence. Mary Lou Retton mounting the uneven parallel bars. And this could be one of the events that she wins a medal in next year at the Olympics. Good rhythm. Nice giant swing. Here comes her unique move called the Retton. Every gymnast goal to have a move named after her. Getting ready for her dismount. Boy, solid landing. And she's happy with that routine. Smile, so much energy. She's definitely a crowd favorite here, Donna. She really turns them on. They respond to her every time she steps on the floor. Her score, a 9.9. .9. She remains, however, in second place behind her teammate, Diane Durham. This is Kathy Johnson, 24 years old, preparing for the floor exercise. And I'm sure Kathy would tell you that this is her favorite event. She is driven by a philosophy that is based on communication with her audience. Let's watch as she communicates. Triple fall, not quite around. beautiful music. Second tumbling run. Hike double back. Good landing for Kathy. For Kathy, a long time in the limelight, she won the bronze medal in this event at the 1978 World Championships. Nancy, you ask her how she stayed in this sport so long. It's gotten kind of scary lately. I feel the limits. They're there, you know, the boundaries. And when I get to one, I think, I can't move this one. You know, I cannot go any farther. I do. I mean, it's only inch by inch. It used to be back when I was young, you know, I'd push it back a couple miles, it felt like. But it's closer, and that makes the challenge greater, and it makes the satisfaction greater. Very well said by Kathy, and she must be satisfied today, competing with an injured foot doing a fantastic job. There's a double fall. And a dramatic ending. Kathy Johnson obviously communicated well to an appreciative audience. They love her. A great role model for youngsters all over the country.
Her score, a 9.80, which will move her up into a tie for fourth place with Julianne McNamara. So at the conclusion of the second rotation, in first place it's Durham, second Retton, and third from the German Democratic Republic, Birgit Sint. And now for today's Olympic moment. This Olympic moment is brought to you by the Bell Yellow Pages. Get the Yellow Pages talking. Let your fingers do the walking. July 19, 1980, the opening day ceremonies of the Moscow Olympic Games. 27-year-old Nikolai Andrianov is competing in his third successive Olympiad. If he wins four medals here, he will become the greatest male medal winner in Olympic history. When the gymnastics championship gets underway, Andrianov is magnificent. He wins five medals, two gold, two silver, and one bronze, as the Soviet Union wins its first men's team championship since the 1956 Melbourne Games. Nikolai Andrianov of the Soviet Union, in three Olympiads, the winner of 15 medals, seven gold, five silver, and three bronze. Nikolai Andrianov, the greatest male medal winner in Olympic history. Tational Gymnastics Classic, I'm Donna Deverona, along with Nancy Peace Marshall. And this is the leader of the competition so far, Diane Durham. She's earned two 9.9 .9 scores so far. She has a dynamic mount, front somersault right over the bar, hits it well. Good, strong, giant swings. Ooh. That's a little painful on the heel. A deduction for that, or did she just save a move there? There will be a slight deduction. All kinds of strength. Good dismount, lands it well. And listen to that crowd. It's a very knowledgeable crowd, and they know when they're seeing good gymnastics. Aggressive is Diane's middle name, and that she is as she approaches her bar routine. And Diane Durham now earns her third 9.9 .9 score in this all-around competition. Three 9.9s are really hard to beat, but while Diane was on the unevens, Birgit Sint was on the balance beam trying to hold on to third place. She looked a little shaky as she performed, her difficulty level a bit low. But this mistake coming up is what dropped her out of third place. Front somersault and a fall, which costs five tenths, so she ends up with a 9.0 score. Kathy Johnson continued her strong performance, lay out Sukahara as a vault, and finishes with a 9.6. And that should move Kathy Johnson up in the standing. Now, Julianne McNamara, ready for the uneven bars. Bronze medal winner in the World Championships. Julianne is also aggressive on this event. Fantastic control. Good extension in her legs. Nice pacing. Back stalled her. Oh, didn't quite make it up. There's a mistake. Painful one. Into her dismount. Low on the dismount. That was not one of Julianne's better routines. Julianne starts out strong, but finishes with a dismount, landing low, which is a bit of a deduction. Her score, a 9.55, keeps Julianne McNamara in fourth place, but now she's in a tie with the Bulgarian Stoyanova. In first place, it's Diane Durham. In second place, it's Mary Lou Retton. And in third place, all alone, Kathy Johnson. Kelly Pavilion, I'm Donna Deverona, along with Nancy Thies Marshall, and we're here for the final round of the gymnastics competition. Kathy Johnson scored a 9.7 in the uneven parallel bars. That should help her hold on to third place. About to begin, Mary Lou Retton on the floor exercise, and Diane Durham is up next on the beam. there. Nancy, what do you think Coach Bella 
twirl he's doing now. Who's he concentrating on? He's trying to do the impossible and concentrate on both of them, Donna. Diane Durham on the left, on the balance beam. Diane does a good, solid tumbling run. Mary Lou trying to concentrate only on her routine. And yet, I know she knows her teammates up on the balance beam. Double back, good height. Fantastic. dynamic force that's going to lead our team to the 1984 Olympics. And Diane on the balance beam, a true mark of a competitor. Diane knows everything there is to know about Mary Lou's routine, her floor exercise music, and yet she's had to block it all out and perform on this event, the balance beam. Good high just now. Great finish to a terrific performance for Diane. Nancy, both these athletes look so powerful and perform in such a similar manner. We talked about Diane being aggressive on the uneven bars. Mary Lou is aggressive as she goes for this tumbling run. Good high double back somersault. And her score, a 9.8. She'll hang on to her second place. And for Diane Durham, a little bit of a bobble on her balance beam tumbling run. Back walk over into a back handspring. Loses her balance a bit. That'll be a tenth or two deduction. Diane Durham score, 9.65. Look at those two. That's the story for 1984. <laughs> and Bella, I'm sure, is explaining how difficult it was to follow the girls as they performed. Goriana Stoyanova. Waiting to go on the uneven parallel bars. Good extension in her legs, a little loose in the body. Cast a straight-bodied handstand. Routine is going a bit slow. Clear hip circle. Giant swing right into a double back flyaway. Not a bad routine, but nothing really unique. While the judges are compiling the score, let's take a look at the balance beam, and it's Julianne McNamara who's currently tied for fourth. And Julianne has to block out the applause for the other events. Coming up, her straddle jump. That has a high level of difficulty because her focus is off the balance beam. Getting ready for her dismount. Round off double back. Low landing. That'll drop her down. Disappointment, I'm sure. An all-around competition. Final performance for Julianne. Stoyanova earns a 9.6 and holds on to fourth place. Julianne McNamara scores a disappointing 9.3. That drops her down to fifth place. So here are the results of the competition as it happened on the floor here at Poly Pavilion. You'll see that the Americans finished in five out of the top six places. But before the meet, the officials determined that the U.S. could only medal twice. So for the record books, here are the final standings. Diane, congratulations. Thank you. How did you feel about your performances? I'm really satisfied. I did real well, and the new tricks that I tried worked out real well. Well, good luck in the future. Thank you. Nancy, an exciting and promising competition for the United States. And having had the experience of competing in the Olympic arena, I'm sure there's nothing but medals in the future for U.S. gymnasts. Can you imagine being these two? As they stand here, I'm sure they share these hopes. We all do. For Nancy Thies Marshall, I'm Donna Deverona. Goodbye from Polly Pavilion. A promotional. Represented.